What's going on guys? So I want to talk about a controversial topic that has come up lately in my streams and that's Simcade versus Simulation. Now I feel like a lot of sim racers throw shade at games like Gran Turismo Sport and since I've been playing a set of Corsa lately, I figured I would make a video about this. Now as some of you know, I competed with these guys that you see on the screen and I'll say that these are some of the most talented drivers I've ever raced against. Now don't get me wrong, there's no denying that a true sim like a set of Corsa Competizione is much more realistic and difficult to drive. I just think it's important to note that Gran Turismo Sport isn't an arcade like Grand Theft Auto. So I mean, right now you'll notice right off the bat if you're getting into Gran Turismo that it's very, very polished. Now this is gonna be a big difference that you're gonna see between you know, something like Gran Turismo and a set of Corsa. Um, you know, the interface is easy to use, it's got a great layout, it's not too cluttered. They just spent a lot of time on the menus with different wheel calibrations. And you also have a good amount of cars to choose from. And you can also have a little fun racing different stuff like using a Ford F-150 versus WRX or whatever you wanna do. And you know, things like this along with fake tracks really go a long way and it adds a little bit more fun to the Simcade experience. Now, while the physics of Gran Turismo are definitely more arcade, I want to point out that basic fundamentals are required for you to improve in Gran Turismo. So stuff like trail braking, throttle control, tire management, all these things are required to be fast and increase your driver rating. You can't just, you know, go play and have no idea what you're doing and then become like an A plus driver. That's just, that's just not going to happen. So it's not as intuitive as, as let's say a set of Corsa, but it's also not unrealistic. Um, Gran Turismo fits into this weird market. It's, it's, like, it's like when you buy your first car, you don't really have a lot of money, but you get what you can afford. And then from that experience, you start to learn more and more, and it guides you to your next purchase. So I feel like that's how Gran Turismo is. You know, you're just, you're kind of getting your feet wet, you're trying the game out, and from there, you're gonna decide what you're gonna do. Are you gonna go into the real sim, the sim world and play like I said, of course, Captacione? Are you gonna move to PC? Or are you just gonna kind of stick with playing on console, play Gran Turismo fun, and just you know stick with that? Um, but we all need to start somewhere, and I see Gran Turismo as that stepping stone. Uh, but I do believe that having a Simcade like Gran Turismo Sport allows us to learn basic driving techniques and have some fun along the way. Uh, those of us who get more serious, and we also have that option to graduate and move on, but let's get real, the reality is that a very large market of people enjoy things to be simple. Now let's talk about a set of Corsa. When you play a simulation like this, you'll notice it's a lot more straightforward. You pick a track, you race, and it ends. No livery design, no congratulations on a separate screen, nothing. It's not nearly as elaborate as Gran Turismo Sport. The reward of a sim racing game is the experience getting behind the wheel. It's the immersion, the sound, the fear of not crashing and ruining your entire race. You have a lot more to worry about and this forces you to take each turn more seriously. Mistakes can have huge consequences just like real life. So in my opinion, damage is one of the best features in a racing game because it creates fear. In Gran Turismo Sport, which is a problem in my opinion, you don't really care about hitting another car because there isn't much consequence outside of a penalty. And generally speaking, <laughs> that penalty is probably gonna go to the wrong person anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So my point is that fear changes a driver's choices on the track. It's also important to note that Assetto doesn't have any type of game feeling to it. The menu screens are basic and I find it much more limited. Personally, I think that's a good thing and it doesn't bother me, but others may not. It's obviously personal taste, but at the end of the day, you're playing this game for the driving experience. However, it's perfectly fine if you don't like Assetto. Maybe you want livery design or more variety. Also, the style of game might be too serious for some people, and I can completely understand that. But the thing is, we should be happy that we have the choice to play both a Simcade and a Simulation whenever we want. While both of them are completely different, I think that they need each other. Some days I look forward to streaming Gran Turismo and having a road car race against, let's say, a Corvette and a Viper. Other days I want a serious GT3 race, and that's where Assetto comes in. So it depends on my mood. And to be honest, I just love racing cars, and I always will. So getting on the track and 
having that sense of immersion is created on Assetto, but sometimes kind of messing around and having a little bit of fun and looking at all, all the awesome cool liveries on Gran Turismo, that's also a lot of fun. So my final conclusion is that we shouldn't poke fun of games being a simcade or a simulation. We need to respect that we have both options depending on what our lifestyles are and what is more convenient for us. Nobody can tell you what is better. It's up to you to decide what you want to play. At the end of the day, we all love getting on the track and having a blast. So maybe we can appreciate that we all share the same interests. But that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys.